Warning, we are about to spoil the 2014 film, The Voices. If you haven't seen the movie and plan on watching it, leave now and come back later. But if you have seen it, or you just don't care, then please, stick around. Yay. Also, as a fair warning, this film covers topics such as murder and suicide. So if those are subjects that you do not feel comfortable listening to, I would highly suggest skipping this episode. Oh god, I don't know what happened. I just stabbed her by accident 22 times in the chest. Jerry, that kills people! Hello everybody and welcome to Cinema Roulette! We're in person again. Yeah, I don't know. You sometimes pause, sometimes you don't. It's confusing. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, stay fucking consistent. It's been 120-something <laughs> episodes. Well, I want to keep it varied. That's the whole point. We've seen so many episodes. We want to change it up every once in a while. Oh, yeah, we need moments of silence for we me to fucking come do. in. Well, we have a moment of silence during every episode, so. Well, with a moment of silence, then we're not talking with our voices. Yeah. Ah, I see what you did there. Yeah, but right. that's not the segue yet. Oh, so, uh, okay. Anyway, we're fin- we're doing our... This is our last movie from the director wheel before we go back to the sellout wheel. Yep. Which is known as The Voices. That's the segue, right? No. Oh, oh shit. The Voices, that one is. Oh, okay. There. Shut up! See, because of the silence, you could tell that was the segue. Yes. Okay, cool, cool. Just just wanted to make sure. Just wanted to make sure. I like how we listen to the director's name about four times, and my brain's like, you don't remember it. Eat shit. Yeah, this was uh, made in 2014 by Marjan Satrapi. Yeah, it's Miss Satrapi. And he'll call her that just because he's having trouble remembering Marjan. Yep, my brain is stupid. I can remember all the lyrics to Danny Phantom, <laughs> but I cannot remember someone's name, even though I listened to it about four times before starting this recording. It's because it's a French word. Oh, fuck the French. <laughs> <laughs> fuck the French. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, Marjan Satrapi is actually part French, part Iranian, which is really cool. Yeah, so. we'll learn more about that with, uh, oh, which one is it? Pernelopus? I think it is. Yeah, I it's an Anne made movie she helped with, and that mainly got her on the map. Mm, that's cool. But anyway, The Voices is a dark comedy from 2014, like we said. I've seen this before. Cameron had not. Mm-hmm. But it's been a while since you'd seen it, right? Yeah, it's been like four years. It was. Mm-hmm. I saw it in my first year of college. <laughs> God, has that been four years? Isn't that scary? How <laughs> time passes. existential dread <laughs> good times I'm, I'm glad that conversation was there i think i will 100 percent do the fucking statue do it thing. do it <laughs> mm. um i will say something about it from when i watched it in class oh it was for class yeah it was I watched it in college for a class i said this like a fucking second ago motherfucker <laughs> I, I zoned out during that part sorry Dumb piece of shit. Which class was it for? It was the only film class at the ah. college. Because it was a community college. Mm-hmm. Teacher was awesome. Can't remember his name either. <laughs> Clearly he left a big impression on you. It was a big man. Made me watch All About Steve. Anyway, that's another story. Uh, so should we do the plot? Yeah, I let's guess. do it. Summary. We're in Milton, Ohio. It's not actually said to be Ohio. <laughs> but that wouldn't surprise me. Would it? Or Nebraska. I don't know why. Feels like Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Or Maine. Or Texas. <laughs> Arizona. <laughs> yes, the whitest community in the Philippines, like Jesus Christ. <laughs> but there's a man named Jerry. Jerry is, well, he's special. Little off his rocker. Not all there. And Jerry's working at a company that makes furniture, just called Melton Furniture. Jerry is uh, said to work on a company party coming up, because the new people always have to. And he sees a, a beautiful woman named Fiona, which he instantly falls in love with. He's also at home talking to his cat and dog, but don't worry about that. It's fine. 
He just talks character. to his pets. Everyone does. Yeah, and they talk back sometimes. Yeah. Most of the time. Except when he does the drugs. But he hasn't been doing those drugs, so that's fine. Even though his therapist keeps telling him he has to or he's going yeah. back to jail. Is it bad that my mind immediately went to, Kids, stop doing, doing the, the drugs! drugs. <laughs> no, I'm not playing an Art Value Select song in. You don't have to, I was just saying. That's what my mind immediately thought of when you said that. We also find out Jerry's mom might have been a bit crazy, too. Yeah, so this they, they, they never specify what disease, the disease is, but we know it's genetic. Like, his mom had it, too. Mm-hmm. So, I also do like that they never specify it, so it doesn't stigmatize any certain di- uh, mental disability. So, <coughs> split anyway. Um, fuck split. <laughs> no, I don't care if you subtly try to do it. Split yeah, no. is a fucking awful movie. Mm-hmm. That will be talked about in our time. No, it won't. Not on cinema roulette. We're not watching it. No, unless we you do like top ten hated movies. I would. I thought we agreed. Let's never do something like that. That's fair. I don't know. If the fans demand it enough, if we get big enough, people are like, do films you hate. Do films you hate. Pay us money. Uh, yeah. I was going say for the right amount, we'll do it. But anyway, back to plot stuff. Anyway, Jerry tries hitting it off with Fiona. Fiona is not having it. She's not into it. Even stands him up for a date. But she was out doing karaoke, and as he's driving home, she actually gets stuck in the rain. Well, it stops rain by the time he shows up. And she's like, hey, you know what, fuck it, I'm sorry. Let's go get some greasy food, and we can head home. Jerry says, cool, yeah, we can do that. But then they hit a deer. Jerry, the deer tell him that uh, it's in pain and he should end it. So he just slits it, its throat. pulls out a knife that he had and and just slits his throat, yeah. Fiona's noticeably terrified especially since he was going on a questionnaire that led to the answer of lucifer uh yeah and the fact too that when he slipped throat it was an artery so it splattered all over faces like just yeah so that's fun yeah uh he chases her through the woods trying to apologize trips and accidentally stabs her with a knife and then keeps doing it yeah, and he uses the same rationale for the deer. He's like, oh, I can see that you're suffering. Hold on. I can fix that. And then he stabs her in the heart to stop. Um, he goes back home, cleans himself off, and cries a bit. Scottish cat says, yo, you need to go hide that fucking body. Yeah, the cat has a Scottish accent, by the way. So, And the dog kind of has a southern drawl going on. Yeah, the dog is kind of the good angel here. Is like, you should yeah. just turn yourself in. Cat's like, no, fuck that. You're going to go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> they won't understand. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I tripped on my knife 20 times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, he brings her body back home, chops it up, and but keeps her head, which starts talking. Yeah, and the funny thing is he like puts it in little, like, uh, what are they called? Tupperware? Uh, yeah, cases. Tupperware containers. On the trivia, real quick, I also read that like he organizes it because they're different color. It's blue, yellow, blue, yellow. Red. Yeah, just all, <laughs> all in pattern. Yeah. Um, Fiona's head yells at him and it's like, take the drugs because he also just saw his therapist who's like, mm-hmm. okay, you haven't been doing them. Fucking take them. <laughs> so he does. And then he's able to see reality. And yeah. Yeah, his apartment covered in trash he does actually have two pets. For some reason, I remember the cat being stuffed, but that's not the case. Probably mixed it up with a different movie or something. I might have mixed it up with Lasagna Cat. <laughs> What's Lasagna Cat? Uh, that dark Garfield parody that was popular a while ago. Oh, uh, yeah. I, well, I thought, because there was also Gorefield, right? But that was something else. Right? That's something different. I, I really liked Gorefield. <laughs> Gorefield's fucked up. <laughs> but it's good. Um, but while he's off the drugs, he sees, like, the dead body... He, Blood he is, everywhere, apartments are wreck. But. Apartments are wreck. Animals don't talk to him. So he says, fuck that. That's depressing as hell. Yeah. <laughs> dumps the drugs. We also see a flashback that he had a rather abusive father who clearly didn't care about mental illness and mm-hmm. was just basically saying, stop it. Because that's how mental illness yeah. works. Remember, if you have any mental problems, just say no. Yeah, right. And you'll be cured. It's that fucking easy, apparently. <laughs> Depressed? Don't be. Yeah, just don't be. Like, I always fucking love that. That was ridiculous. Just don't be. It's like, <laughs> such a... I'll get into it later, but... There's a fucking garbage... Uh, my middle school was garbage and had a sign for a while that said happiness is yeah. a choice. Fuck you. 
which it's like I'll go into that later. Anyway, we need to stay focused because my mind's kind of racing a bit now. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's fair. Uh, I'm realizing I should stop doing these tangents and finish that before we get to that. <laughs> it's hard not to. There's a lot to talk about. There with this is. Movie. Um, but he dumps the pills. Fiona asks for a friend. <laughs> yeah, she's like, "Can you get me a friend? It's lonely in here." Yeah, because now she's exceptional. Because she was already British, she's exceptionally British now. Yeah, because now it's in his head, and she he brings it out, and she's like, "Hello, good morning, cheerio, <laughs> for Queen and Country." <laughs> So he goes to another person in accounting at his work named Lisa and uh, goes on a date. Because she, before it was established, had the hots for him. Yeah. Because so. uh, the way he set up the day is he was actually taken out to the bar with all the other women in accounting and had to drive uh, Fiona home. Mm-hmm. We all, he takes Lisa back to his house, his original house where he grew up with his parents And he has a flashback to how he basically assisted his mother with suicide, which is why he was institutionalized for so long and then came Mm -hmm. back out. And this is why we put the trigger warning at the end, because it is a very disturbing scene. Yes, but it's plot relevant. We're going to probably talk about it more. Yep. Um, Lisa comes over. Lisa, wanting to surprise Jerry after the date, uh, comes over to his house and... Uh, he locks himself out. He was going to go in through the roof, but she has a bobby pin and tries to, uh, well, picks the lock, goes in, and sees fucking everything. Notably terrified, <laughs> Jerry tries to talk to her, but through this and a bit of running around, he accidentally pushes her par- and breaks her neck, killing her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not even a quick death. Like a No, it's slow... very clearly like she suffered. Like, <laughs> yeah, a slow bleed out thing. Also, his mother said she was suffering. So you, there's yeah, kind of a that's why. There. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, another chick from accounting comes over because Lisa said she was going to Jerry's. Her name is Allison. And literally, it's just a hard cuff. Hi, Allison. Chop. Yeah. You like, like, it's like, hey there. Hey. And then you hear a shink sound. And then it just hard cuts to him putting her head in the fridge. <laughs> Yeah, so now he has three heads in the fridge. He goes to his therapist and just to doing all this. The therapist tries to call the cops. He stops her and goes to talk to her in a field while she's tied up. Yeah, I was going to say he, he binds her up. and yeah. And during this, uh, more of his co-workers go to the house and see what's happening and call the cops. The one dude goes inside, just sees it for a second, and then comes out and just vomits. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, Jerry has a good therapy session. Brings therapist home. Uh, the his dog accidentally gets away. Yeah, he's fine though. Don't worry. Yeah, because uh, the people who came in let him out. Yeah, so. accidentally let him out. Um, he goes back to his home with the therapist. Is trying to figure things out. Cops come. He he lives above a bowling alley, so he takes an air vent down. Accidentally hits a gas, uh, gas pipe. Starts leaking gas in. A spark blows it, it up. And the voices in his head debate between him leaving or staying or trying to get, escape the fire and causing more harm or stay in the fire and just accept it. Mm-hmm. He does accept it. We get a dance scene with all dead people and Jesus. And then the movie ends. It's a fucking hilarious ending scene because it comes right the fuck out of nowhere. You thought Bright Side of Life was funny. Yeah, right? Like, this is that times 10. <laughs> But wow, like, where to even begin with this movie? <laughs> the thing I found funny in my class mm-hmm. was, um, because it wasn't a two-hour class or anything. It was still normal nine minutes. So we... Oh. And we had to cut between uh, days. Where did you stop in the movie? I forget where we stopped. But I remember my teacher asking questions like, how do you think this is going to end? <laughs> or how would you not like it to end? And everyone in the class was like... Well, if he kills himself, that would be kind of a lame ending. <laughs> but it happens, and it actually worked. It, it actually worked because of this outlandish ending scene, which is great. <laughs> yeah, it just kept the tone so fucking well. Okay, the tone is all over the place, it, but in a good way. Yeah, like, it knows how to pace the serious moments with the d- really, really, really dark comedy. Like, <laughs> that's the thing, because this is a, like, kind of horror thriller, but it also has, it also is mostly a dark comedy as well, so... Yeah, it knows. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and actually, you know what? That's a really good example, too, just a quick side tangent of how, like, an ending can make or break the movie. Like, because if it just ended with him in the bowling alley passing out, that would be lame. But they add this in, and it actually works. I think ending in the bowling alley will, will have still been okay. Mm -hmm. But it definitely wouldn't have felt yeah. good in any way. And then, like, a bad example of that is Jacob's Ladder. If they had just cut the last minute, it would have been fine. Okay, I was making sure you didn't say too much, otherwise we'd have to put a spoiler warning. No, no, I wasn't going to say actually spoil anything. I'm just saying if they cut that last minute, it would have been fine. But it's symbolic and mean eh. stuff. I hate Jacob's Ladder. Uh, <laughs> the but, voices. <laughs> anyway, the voices. Um, but, yeah, that comedy usually hits. That yeah. There's a bit of cringe humor, I guess, at the beginning that's like, eh. Yeah, a little bit, like with the, you know, whole social awkwardness thing. But, but once once we murder someone, things really starting to lighten up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what really lightens the mood like murder? I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm trying to think here on how to segue or move along. Yeah, segues are hard. Just go to the next point. I don't know how to, like, even just saying segues are hard and going to the next point isn't an easy way what, to do what it. What point are you trying to make? Are you trying to decide what point you want to go to? Or yeah. What? Um, okay, yeah, that's a little trickier. Because, um, like, tonal-wise, the movie is kind of a tragedy in a way because you yeah. do see Jerry actually start to get along with Fiona or even with Lisa, he's actually happy. Yeah, he's actually happy. And, like, the flashback scenes to his childhood are really, really dark. Like, and there are very serious moments. Like when he's in the office kidnapping the psychiatrist, it's really intense. Like, yeah. And Ryan Reynolds does a really good job at like the serious, like breakdown acting. Like he, yeah. Like when he finally snaps at, yeah. as uh, all the heads are talking to him and yeah. the cat, he just does this scream. And it's really fucking sad. Yeah. He, he did such a good job in the lead role. Like just props to him in this movie. <laughs> Yeah, it does a good fine line of like between Jerry being a horrible person and actually and there being some understanding of like this yeah. isn't entirely his fault in no. a way. Yeah, a lot of it was the circumstances he grew up in and having, you know, abusive households because that shit does happen and that leads to mental illness. So not that mental illness leads to violence. Honestly, no. they're more the victims no. of violence. Exactly. So which you could go on a big negative rant on the film on what kind of pushes that narrative of them mm -hmm. causing violence. But that is another topic. Yeah. And like we said earlier, it doesn't stigmatize it because it never says what he has. It's just... It's just general mental illness, which you can debate if that's yeah. still bad. Like, people have said that he shows signs of, like, schizophrenia and other ones, but that's, that's just looking at it from a, 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 an outside perspective and diagnosing it. The music... The movie... The music. The movie never says it. The musical never decides. Yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, I, I actually just felt bad with Lisa because it was like, he is actually happy yeah. if... If the whole thing with Fiona just didn't happen, it mm -hmm. could have been fine. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she would have been like, wow, your house is fucking dirty, but hey. Yeah, at least there wouldn't have been blood and head, severed heads on the table. <laughs> like, Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he brought it out to talk to it and left it on the table, so that didn't yeah. help. And he's very bad at hiding things, I must say. He just throws a jacket over the head. <laughs> Couldn't put it back yeah. in the fridge. And then for the cars, he just throws a tarp over it. A t well, he did move it to the back of the parking he lot. He did, but he just threw a tarp. But the tarp doesn't even cover it. It's like halfway over the other car. Mm -hmm. He only had one tarp. Yeah. <laughs> Tarps are expensive. And he can't go to work anymore. He was able to afford all that hardware. Eh, hardware's cheap. <laughs> well, yeah, that's tone, I guess. I guess. Fucking segues. Yeah. Um, cinematography is fucking gorgeous. Oh, yeah. The I'm trying to think of how to describe yeah. it. The very plastic look? I don't it, it know. It does kind of, but it's interesting because when it goes into the real world, like the camera started shaking and it was very dark and like very panicky and stuff. But when it was back in his dream world, everything was kind of oversaturated a little bit. Like everything looked a little too white and dreamy and like, ha ha, happy go lucky. Yeah, it's it's a nice tonal shift whenever you see reality. It's all, all that gets yeah. sucked out. Another really nice touch is from his perspective when he looks at the apartment, everything's clean. But if it's another character's perspective, you actually see what the apartment is. Yeah, you see all the dirtiness and whatnot. Yeah. Which also this somehow counts as a fun fact on IMDb. Yeah. It's, it's the like main that's, point of the movie. That's that's yeah, that that was he more than heavily implied. It's shown. Like it's shown multiple yeah. times. I do like the one where he's looking in the sunroof 
And when it's him looking down, it looks fine. But when it cuts back to her at the bottom, everything looks crazy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, are things out of shot? But then when it cuts back down to her, you can see there's a stack of like containers or whatever right next to the table. Yeah, it's really clever how they play with that. I really liked that. I'm also happy that they just made sure the animals were okay. Like you, the cops show up and they're like, oh, we found the dog and the cat. We'll give them to animal control. (laughs) (laughs) It reminds me of the drag of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Because in the American dub, there's a moment where. uh, Oh, the lovely American dub. (laughs) mm -hmm. I think this was a four kids dub. Oh, of course. Even better. (laughs) Or it might have just been the straight American dub. Either way. There's a moment where, like, a village shoots down a helicopter, Uh, and a reporter is talking about everything that's going on. He's like, oh, thank goodness, they're all waving, so they're okay. Or during a city fight, like, a building Mm -hmm. is broken, it's like, thank goodness it's a Sunday, or people might have gotten hurt. (laughs) Yeah, right? Like, conveniently, like, no one's getting hurt because they're trying to have it for kids. It's mm-hmm. like, wow, it's a good thing that building was totally empty, guys. No one died. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. What else? Did they really say it's a good thing it was a sun? Yes, that, was that is a real thing. That's actual excuse. The zombie making shit up. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. But, uh, uh more of the movie. Fucking... Every actor does a great job. Ryan Reynolds, we already talked about. Yep. <laughs> but uh, Fiona, Allison, Lisa, all Everyone. funny. Yeah, all funny, all distinct personalities, and all, yeah, do a really good job. So, And the more uh, intimate moments with Lisa, she seems like a very nice person. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. So, which makes it all the more sad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, also sad, because that's probably one of the most fucked up deaths I've seen in a horror movie. Oh, it's really, it's really fucked. Like, I would say, that's something we can go into the gore. Yeah. Like this gore, I think you pointed out at one point, like it has more gore than most horror movies nowadays. Like it's so fucked. <laughs> and I think because uh, it gives right away that what Jerry is seeing isn't 100% real, mm-hmm. that gives you more of the dramatic irony and also that fucked up horror feeling of yeah. it's not what you're seeing. You can't see it, so you just have to think about what's yeah. going on. Like, 80% of the movie is from his perspective. And then, like, once you know that, once it, like, drops the bombshell that he's seeing a different house than what everyone else is seeing, you then start to question how much of what happened before was real. Mm-hmm. It's like, so, yeah, it's like, so, oh, what would you say? Like, the question about his mom, for example. Like, was she really baking him, or did he just kill her? Yeah, that, I think she did. Mm-hmm. But there's still the level of doubt there because it happened. She kind of does it and then stop. She kind of goes to slit her throat with broken glass, stops, and then hands it to him. And she asks him to finish it. And that's all we see of that. Then they come in, her neck slit, and he's just standing there like... Kind of like Michael Myers at the start of Halloween. Yeah. So. <laughs> Is that a spoiler? No. That's literally the opening of the movie. I know, but do, <laughs> I think they say it's Michael Myers right away. Yes, they do. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, because the cop says Michael. Yes. Never mind. Okay. Good job. Okay, I'm we're making good. sure. We're I good. forgot if they tried to build up who the killer could be. You're fine, yeah. <laughs> um. But, yeah, that... But the scene, Lisa's death... Like, okay, yes, I've seen more fucked up in horror movies, you know, people being torn to bits, oh, whatever. Yeah, shit, like saw deaths and stuff like that. Yeah, but. that's fucked up from a literal standpoint, but this is sort of what... It's sort of like how Assassin's Creed stabbings are somehow more fucked up than Doom Glory <sighs> kills. I know, yeah. Because of a lack of gore. Yeah, and, and the thing that is just so brutal about her death is he pushes her on the bed, you hear the neck snap, and you see her kind of going... Ugh! like struggling to breathe. But then you see blood start coming, just filling up her eyelid and coming out of her eye. Cause you know, cause her next snap, her brain is hemorrhaging now. Yeah. It's really fucked. <laughs> the deer also. Yeah. That scene, that was actually a very good deer model. I that was, say. I will say. <laughs> also, I have to jokingly point out, this is the second movie we've seen now where someone cries blood. We watched Casino Royale earlier because we're not we're gonna cover that movie in like five years. Probably like five years when we actually land on it. Yeah. Yeah, we only just did Doctor No. <laughs> yeah. Haven't even landed on for Rush with Love yet, which I'm actually really excited for that one. Well, technically so. we haven't had a chance. Yes. Because Doctor No, we well, you know. Doctor No was the last thing we did from the Summer yeah. Wheel. So Um 
what else here? I'm trying to think of other things before going into the theming. Yep. Because, fuck, there's a lot. There really is with the theming. Yeah, we said the gore is fucked up. Uh, all that. Gore is fucked up. Set design is yeah. beautiful. Yeah, pro- all the practical effects really good. So, like, the head, that looks just... Oh, especially perfect. when you see in reality, uh, it's, like, starting to yeah, rot. Yeah, it's... Ugh. They don't go too far with that. No. Like, we point out, it, by the end, it's like, her head would have been way more rotted by then. But because it was yeah. like a week or something had passed since her death, more than a week. Yeah, at least two. So <laughs> would have started turning into a skull by that point. I think. No, not that much, mm. but it still would have been like melting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, with Jerry's uh, disillusion, like uh, he see when he comes back for Fiona's body, since it's in the woods, she looks like she's lying there as an angel in a mm-hmm. field of daisies. But we kind of see what's really there of her purse and her organs are out. Yeah. Which implies how much stabbing there was and how fucked it got. And I think this was before we actually saw the house. And I was actually like in my head, I was like, is that an inconsistency? Cause she didn't look like her organs were out. She looked all like cra- fancy and he wrapped her yeah, up, but she only had a few stab yeah. wounds around. But then like, cause you know, he kept stabbing her and stabbing her. We saw, mm-hmm. but yeah, so it's implied that he stabbed her so much. Her organs just fell out. Like, and actually, now yeah. that I'm thinking about it, the stabs you see, it's like up the side yeah. of her gut. So if he stabbed her multiple times there, yeah, that would have happened. That's that's just fucked. Like, it, it's what the movie doesn't show that makes it worse. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, for example, after we know it's a severed head, he then sticks a spoon in her mouth and then goes back and like... And like is feeding uh, her cereal the next morning after uh, he takes the pills. It's... Mm, I mean, after he stops after taking After he stops it. Yeah, it's, it's grody. <laughs> Or I do love the forklift, the synchronized forklift <laughs> dancing. <laughs> like after he's back off of his medication, he goes back to work and it's like all happy. And like, they're like, doo, 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 and they're all in a line and spinning around like some fucking musical or yeah, something. Yeah, like synchronized swimmers. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> stupid. Okay, we're going to have to talk about theming at some point. Yeah, let's do that because there's a lot to cover with that. I think we've covered most of the technical aspects, yeah? Yeah. So, Seven let's time. say sound design, nothing to write home about, but they, the, the use of music is really good. The, so. I love how there's a, t- a theme song for Milton at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, it's That's great. That's fucking great. There's like a little montage with the Milton theme song showing everybody working and stuff. So <laughs> like this shitty small town. Yeah. Um... I guess we should have had a trigger warning for abuse as well. That too. I didn't think we'll about that. We'll say it now. There's, there's also. Yeah, okay. If Before we go any further, they're about child abuse and especially towards people with mental illnesses. Yeah. So if that's too much, I'd say back. Uh, see you next time type deal. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's get into the actual like hard stuff. This whole business, a tragedy of, first off, if he met Lisa before Fiona and stopped taking the pills, she would have probably been there a hundred percent for him. Yep. And none of this would have happened. Yeah. If, if no actual murder had happened, that's also the thing too with Lisa is she like, he's kind of saying double entendres and not totally go into Mm -hmm. his illness. And she is trying to understand it is like, yeah, I understand loneliness and all that or not feeling connected to people. And that just sucks. <laughs> like, I know it's like the fucking, um, what's the word for it? That's downplaying it a lot. I'm just saying it sucks. But yeah, but it it's does. basically in a nutshell, that's what it is. Yeah, like, it's fucking tragic. Because <clears throat> mm-hmm. that's the thing, and it does happen to people. So like familial abuse, it's just it's terrible. Yeah, uh, trauma can lead to a lot of mental illness. Yep. Hell, if um, he was just living with his mother, he might have been okay. Mm-hmm. Like, not 100%. They might have needed a nurse or yeah. something just to keep things in check, but... Well, if it's two crazy people living together, how would they have known? True. Or even... Uh, they taught... He mentions quickly in one offline that his father kind of forced his mother to come to America. Because mm-hmm. she originally lived in Berlin, had a choice of Berlin or coming with him. Yeah. Which I don't know how that... Hmm. That is odd, yeah. I, say, I don't think that's the thing we're supposed to be thinking about when we watch this movie. <laughs> I know. It, also, just the quick scene of the abusive dad. That's Yeah, it's it's really disturbing because he has like this little sock that he talks to and he's like, it's not real. Give me the sock. Throw it away. And he's just like, ugh, it's terrible. 
Like, oh. and his mom's on the stairs crying, and he's like, I wish you were never born, and stuff like that. It's it's hard to watch. Fucking shit, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it balances these heavy subjects well, too. It does, yeah. <laughs> and again, that re- helps humanize Jerry and being like, this shouldn't have happened to this guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to go with things, because... I also don't want to try to say too much about something I don't know mm-hmm. type deal. That's fair. But yeah, actually, let's let's talk about real quick, because there's one other thing. We didn't say what it was, that ending scene. Oh, right. The ending scene. So yeah, of course, he, he commits suicide, essentially goes and dies in the fire and all that. But then it cuts to like the dog and the cat saying their goodbyes because, you know, they were in his head. So now they're dead. And they're like, OK, well, I guess I'll talk to you later, pal. OK, see you later. And then that, that was more of an Irish than a Scottish, my bad. But um, <laughs> it'll piss either of them off. Uh, yeah. Matter. But um, and then all of a sudden, Chu comes in and it turns out it's Ryan Reynolds wearing a blue blue suit. And it's just a giant musical number. He sees all the people he killed. And he's like, I'm sorry. And they're like, yeah, yeah, they're like oh, about it's the fine. And then like Jesus comes out and they're like, oh, wow, Jesus, you made it. Yeah, man, wouldn't miss it for the world. And they sing about how happy they are and how good everything is. And then he's lifted <laughs> on a forklift <laughs> to heaven. Fork lift to heaven. <laughs> so fucking stupid. And I love it. That's also, just, his parents are there. His parents are there and they're like oh man i'm so i love that how casual it was to like to his victims like i'm sorry about it. i murdered you and all that ah, let's not talk about the past <laughs> fuck it <laughs> and it's just a big old musical number about how happy they are and i died laughing at that point i, that I just... remembered it went over the top but i forgot <laughs> it went that i forgot about jesus that was the main thing that set me off <laughs> Hi, Jesus. How are you? He's here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> You're also in pink and orange for some reason. Yeah, I think it's just supposed to be like a parody of like classic musicals or whatever, where they had the giant bright colors and all that. I feel like there was a symbol there, but I don't know it. Probably. I can't think of what was orange in the movie. There was a lot of pink. Yeah. Mainly at the workplace. I would understand if they were red because they were murdered, but I don't, know. Yeah. I don't know orange or stuff. But yeah, that that was great. And I, I just want to show people this movie just to see their reaction to that. To that ending. Ending scene, Cause it just, it does come right the fuck out of nowhere. <laughs> I was expecting the kind of dog to talk about Mac and PC. Right. Is that too old of a joke now? Oh God. I, oh man. Yeah. I was going to say, that's going to date us. Yeah. Cause the, those were against a white background, weren't they? Uh huh. I'm Mac and I'm PC. I'm PC. Yep. Oh my. The, all our younger viewers might not get that one. Uh, all two of them. Back when Steve Jobs is still alive, may he rest in peace. Oh, fuck him, he was a billionaire. <laughs> Cut that joke. Why? I, I haven't heard him complain. Shut the fuck up. I don't have his head in my fridge, so. <laughs> well, good for you. I. <laughs> but yeah, that... That ending honestly shifts the tone to being light again. Yeah. And, and without it, it, it just would have been, it would have still worked, but it would have just been like, eh. It would have been but, bitter. It would have been bitter. But I, I do like that, that she just threw that in there. It was great. Oh, yeah. If her movies stick to this level of, <laughs> yeah. like, emotional tone, I'm down. Yeah, this absolutely. Is fun. So um, was it Marjan or was it someone else whose movies got really sad? Was that a different female uh, director? That's a different female director. Okay. Because there is one female director we're kind of looking forward to, but kind of not because we heard all of those movies are horribly depressing. Oh, they're dark. <sighs> I, I know the twist of one of them. Oh, you had that spoiled for you? I did, yeah. Oh. Blame Randy. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I mentioned like, oh, hey, we're putting this one on the list. And he's like, oh, is that where this happens? And I'm like, oh. I don't know, Randy. I haven't seen <sighs> it. Randy's my brother, by the way. <laughs> it's okay. He's in Wisconsin now. Uh <laughs> He's in the hell he deserves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, that was The Voices. Really, really good movie. Heavily recommended. Just be warned of the content in it. I mean, if you left the episode, that would, yeah. you're not really listening so. to recommendations. But if you are yeah. able to make it through that stuff, if you are able to handle it, yeah. then. By all means. So It's on HBO Max. Yep. Should still be there. So without further ado, I think it's time. It's time to get to the sellout wheel. We're back at the sellout wheel. How long has it been since we've been at the sellout wheel? Four episodes. Well, well, for us, I mean, how long has it been? 
while. It's been a few months. Yeah. Like, we, we didn't watch it at all in June because mm-hmm. we're doing movie month. Yep. Movie month is planned. Get excited. And it's done. We've recorded it. It's not, uh, though, so no. it's like half done. But it is recorded. So look forward to that. <laughs> and like I said on Facebook, it will have a video feed. So. <gasps> well, you don't want fans going on your personal Facebook. That'd be weird. That's true. You can listen to it. You can find out about stuff about... Uh, words are hard. Go on our Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> find all the links. We were trying to do a shameless plug, but words didn't come. Oh, so. my God. My brain wanted all the words. <laughs> I have the hiccups, too, so we should probably... <laughs> being a bitch. Jesus. Sorry. Right into the mic. I, it was kind of this way. And I cut it out. Good job. Good job <laughs> editing me. <laughs> Good job, future me. <laughs> Fucking fantastic. <laughs> Well, also punch Cameron for making him listen to it. Uh, Please don't punch me. You can slap me. Please don't punch me. Actually, I punch weaker than I slap. <laughs> oh. I oh. can't even laugh without hiccuping. This is not fun. <laughs> Fire! It's okay. It's time to spin. <laughs> Cameron, remember how I said we were going to land on one we don't have with us right now? It's for a few dollars more, isn't it? No, it's not. Oh. It's Predator. Of course it is. Which I don't think either of us have the first one. I have the DVD. But that's DVD. It's not HD. It's fun. But we are getting to a new series, which we haven't touched That's yet. exciting. I, I, I can dig it, yeah. So we get to talk about the first Predator. <laughs> which I've seen so many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we'll have three more to go. Yeah. I'm interested to see how that one turns out, because that is another one that's kind of been talked about a lot. So. Oh, fuck it is. Yeah. But hey, it's fine. We'll do our own spin. Just don't even worry about the other reviews. Panic. <laughs> Just get there. Music, 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 music. music. <laughs>